I was diagnosed with ADHD in September 2020, following my youngest daughter's ADHD diagnosis in June 2020. Prior to diagnosis and learning a lot more about ADHD, I had some ideas about ADHD that were based on really unhelpful stereotypes and because of this I would never have considered myself as someone who might have ADHD. Now that I'm diagnosed, I recognise that my ADHD was actually causing significant disruption to my life and I'm actually a fairly obvious and typical adhd -er. It's still really early days for me, but I'm learning to recognise how much better things can be if I work hard to understand ADHD and learn to work with my ADHD. And if I take my meds, because I'm not ashamed to admit that taking ADHD meds has had a massive impact on my ability to function. In this video, I'm going to explain the diagnostic criteria for ADHD in the DSM-5. But before I do, if you're interested in ADHD, autism or disability in general, I'd love it if you'd consider subscribing to my channel for more videos like this one. In order to qualify for an ADHD diagnosis based on your symptoms, there are a number of prerequisite criteria that need to be met. Firstly, your symptoms need to have been present since before the age of 12. If you're older than the age of 12, your symptoms might present differently now to how they did when you were a child, but some form of those symptoms need to have been present since before the age of 12 in order to qualify for that diagnosis. For example, under the age of 12, sometimes I used to forget to wear somewhat essential items of clothing. Yes, I sometimes used to forget to wear underwear. And yes, it's embarrassing. And yes, here I am, sharing that information on the internet. Now that I'm older, I always remember to wear underwear, but I do often forget my house keys, my phone, or lately, my mask. Same symptom, different presentation, but present since before the age of 12, so it counts. The next prerequisite is that the symptoms are present in two or more settings, so for example, home and work. Next, and I think this one's pretty important, there is clear evidence that the symptoms interfere with or reduce the quality of social, academic or work functioning. Which is why sometimes being a bit forgetful or feeling that you're sometimes very energetic does not mean that you have or understand ADHD, Karen. Finally, your doctor will have to be sure that your symptoms are not better explained by a different condition. For example, anxiety disorder, bipolar or substance abuse. Now I'm going to talk about the symptoms that form the criteria for diagnosis. In order to understand how the symptoms are classified, it's useful to know that there are three different presentations of ADHD that you could be diagnosed with. All are ADHD, but the focus is on which type of symptoms you are mostly affected by. If you are mostly affected by inattention, then you would be diagnosed with predominantly inattentive presentation ADHD. Or if you are mostly affected by hyperactivity, then you would be diagnosed with predominantly hyperactive slash impulsive presentation ADHD. Finally, if you are affected by both hyperactivity and inattention, then you would be diagnosed with combined presentation ADHD. FYI, my diagnosis is combined presentation ADHD. So because of this, the symptoms are broken down into two categories, inattentive symptoms and hyperactivity slash impulsivity symptoms. In order to be diagnosed, children would need six or more symptoms in either category to be diagnosed with either inattentive presentation or hyperactive slash impulsive presentation ADHD, or six or more symptoms in both categories to be diagnosed with combined presentation. For those of us aged 17 or over, that number drops to five or more symptoms in either or both categories. Let's start with the inattentive symptoms. And if you're not paying attention at this point, enjoy that sweet, sweet irony. Number one, often fails to give close attention to details or makes careless mistakes. Number two, often has trouble holding attention on tasks. Number three, often does not seem to listen when spoken to directly. Number four, often does not follow through on instructions or fails to complete tasks. Number five, often has trouble organising tasks or activities. Number six, often avoids dislikes or is reluctant to do tasks which require mental effort over a long period of time. Number seven, often loses things that are necessary for tasks or activities. For example, books, wallets, keys, glasses or mobile phone. Oh how I spent my childhood worrying about getting into trouble for losing my house keys or my wallet for the 50 millionth time. 
Number eight is often easily distracted. Number nine is often forgetful in daily activities. So if you have five or more of these symptoms or six if you're under 17, then you would qualify for a diagnosis of inattentive presentation, ADHD. Next, hyperactivity and impulsivity symptoms. Number one, often fidgets with or taps hands and feet or squirms in seat. Number two, often leaves seat in situations where remaining seated is expected. Number three, often runs around or climbs things in situations where that's not appropriate. If you're an adult, this might be limited to feeling restless. Number four, often unable to play or take part in leisure activities quietly. Number five, is often on the go, acting as if driven by a motor. Number six, often talks excessively. Number seven, often blurts out an answer before a question has been completed. I mean, I know how frustrating this must be, but in my defence, I've usually worked out what you're going to say before you've said it, and it's physically painful for me to wait for you to complete the sentence, so I know it's disrespectful, and I'm really sorry about that. Number eight, often has trouble waiting their turn. Number nine, often intrudes or interrupts others, for example, interrupting conversations. So again, if you have five or more, or six if you're under 17, of these symptoms, then you would qualify for a diagnosis of hyperactivity slash impulsivity presentation, ADHD. If, like me, you tick five or more symptoms in both those categories, then you would qualify for a diagnosis of combined presentation, ADHD. So that's it. Those are the diagnostic criteria. I hope you found this video helpful, and if you do get diagnosed with ADHD, I hope that that knowledge enhances your life, like it has mine. If you did like this video, please consider clicking the like button. And if you'd like to support my work, please consider joining my members club, The Purple People. It works a little bit like Patreon, and thanks to their monthly contributions, I'm able to spend my time focusing on making these videos which are helpful for everyone. So if that's something that you could afford to support, then I would appreciate that. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye bye!